Hello and welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Uh, my name is Don Pelto and I have Mr. Riley Sweetland here. Welcome, Riley. Thanks, Don. It's great to be here. It, being back, I, I know a couple of years ago when we, we first met, um, we were talking about follow-up then. I think you did a nice little screen presentation. So for those that want to watch that interview, I'll put it underneath if you want to know the basics of follow-up then. But I'd like you to tell me a little bit about how the business has transformed, kind of what's going on with follow-up then, and just a little intro of what is follow-up then for those that have never heard of it. Yeah, sure, sure. So if it works for you, I actually pulled up the presentation I did for our last video, and I kind of shortened it. And I'd be okay. happy to give just a basic visual on what the product is, just kind of a couple minutes on that. Yeah, let me give you um, screen control here. Okay. It's. I think you should have control right there. Okay, and let me try and share my screen here. Okay, so that should work. Are you able to see that? Yep, perfect. Okay, good. So um, the way that I describe follow-up then now, which is actually slightly different from before, is it's the world's simplest email reminder and personal follow-up assistant. And I'll unpack the last part of that in a little bit because that's a new addition for us. We've you know, always... that's what I think I use it more for, frankly. It's like if I have to get milk at 5 p.m., it reminds me to get milk at 5 p.m. Or, you know, if I can't after take my wife's car to work at 5 a.m. in the next morning, I'll, I'll remind myself so I don't forget. So things like that help me actually more than the email thing now. But go ahead. Oh, great, great. Well, that's great to hear because after it was a lot of feedback like that that helped us kind of realize what we um, actually were, which is more of an assistant. So I'm, I'm really excited to talk about that because that's a new direction for us. It's, we put a lot of work into this new kind of um, version, but I think starting simple might be the best, especially because that I think is why many, if not most people actually do enjoy the product. So um, here's a, a very simple, uh, this is a, a plain email. Um, it is uh, in fact, just an email address. Uh, and the reason we call ourselves an assistant is because you copy us on an email address, just like you'd copy a personal assistant. The difference is that the way that our email address is shaped um, is special. So whatever is before the at sign is actually a moment in time. And there's thousands, uh, actually tens of thousands of formats that we support. Um, you just type what you're thinking, more or less. And we do our best to, um, uh, we have a, a pretty elaborate system that figures out what you meant by that. Um, if, if we can, when I mess up, when I, when I put the underscore in the wrong area, it reminds me like at 3 PM for December 31st, it'll remind, it'll say, Hey, that, that was bad. What do you really mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. If anything's ambiguous, we kick it back because their worst scenario is to schedule something when you don't want it. Yep. So, um, and you don't have to remember the date formats there. There's enough of them where we really try to make it where you just type what you're thinking three D or three days or, um, you know, tomorrow. And then we'll follow up at that time. So um, it, what's shown here too is autocomplete. So as people use it more, their um, your email program automatically remembers the previous addresses. So it yep. creates this um, kind of, especially if you know your keyboard shortcuts for your, your email program, you can have a follow-up scheduled within like two or three seconds in many cases. And that's from your mobile device. It doesn't matter if you switch your email client. It just always is there. So that's the simplicity we've been doing. I mean, follow up then it's been over 12 years now that it's been out there. Um, much of that time was a side project. I confess. In fact, my uh, co-founder at the time and I prototyped follow up then in one night on a Friday night and um, got it working and found it useful. And it, we put it out there and our users, in fact, showed me users such as yourself, Don described to me how they were using it. And it, changed my mind about how awesome the product was. So anyway, that kind of segues into the personal assistant part. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's the basics. Um, and by the way, stop me if I'm, um, if you have any questions or you want to chime no, I, in. The only thing I would, I would say is why would you want to CC a, a personal assistant? It's mostly if Elon doesn't get back to you, right? So if Elon gets back to you, it doesn't really matter. But if Elon ignores your email, like you probably would mine, and you can be the world's most persistent pest by sending it one week at follow-up then. If they don't get back to you, they think you have a really great memory. Like everyone thinks I have a great memory and I don't. I have a great system and it's called follow-up then. So I email everyone and then they don't get back to me in a week because no one gets back to you. And then I say, hey, just making sure if you got this. And then they feel embarrassed 
right? Because they never remember, but you remembered. And then, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm like, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I use it. That's a, that's awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that. So it is in the BCC field here, and that is um, blind. So Elon would never know that you're using follow-up then here. Um, th there's no trace of it, not even in behind the scenes in the in the code. If he looks behind the scenes in the email, he, there's no trace of follow-up then. Um, if you put it in the CC field, however, it does in fact email everybody in the two field. So there's a group reminder scenario there, but that's um, very, very special cases for that. For example, you're project managing somebody or you're delegating a task, for example. And um, people really hate, they really get annoyed if you do the task thing. Because occasionally I'll have, I work with residents and I want them to do something for me and everyone's delayed, but this thing just hounds them automatically until they, until they check that task off. And it's just, it's horrible because every day they get an email and they're like, can you just stop that thing? And I'm like, you can stop it. Just say that you finished it. And no, Don, I have to tell you, I made the mistake of telling my wife about that feature. And uh, I, you know, I, I've got a lot of, I've got some tasks in my inbox here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. So, so go on. This is exciting. What else? So, um, oh, so just the basics. A lot of people just send themselves a future reminder. Um, as I mentioned, this sends everybody in the two field gets a reminder if you put the date in the CC field. And this is a very common, if not the most common scenario where you're emailing somebody and you want a reminder. So you put it in the BCC field that you don't want to bother your recipient with the follow-up. Perfect. So here we get into the personal assistant kind of phase. So this is, at the time we talked last, follow up then we, um, and, and we really still are the simplest email reminder. We want to stay that we, you know, um, we really enjoy being this simple no brainer solution for people, uh, really generous free account. It's just, there's really, we want there to be no reason not to use it. But as you mentioned, this kind of aspect of a personal assistant came in and we realized that that's really what we were replacing in many people's lives or augmenting. We actually had many personal assistants that use our, our system. So we have all of these tasks um, and it's shown here, you know, they're all, we kind of have them all collected or organized in a growing to-do list or some kind of system which always needs pruning and organization. And what we do is we um, spread those tasks out in time. We let you kind of schedule them so that they're, they're useful. And the, the new version of the system really takes this concept and makes each of these moments really powerful, really, really um, special. And we do that by pulling in whatever additional data you might need in order to accomplish a task. For example, if you have a, um, we don't yet integrate with patient record systems. We, we Our security is very high, but we're actually working on HIPAA compliance. Okay. Uh, and SOC 2 and so forth. But um, as an example, we'll pull data from a con uh, customer relationship manager for a follow-up. So instead of just having a follow-up to contact somebody, you have all of their records and everything you need at that exact moment to make that moment particularly productive. So, Excellent. so that's where we're we're that's where we're going. Um, it's much more of a um, of an assistant and that we can automate actions. So for example, when you schedule the follow-up, we might actually do data entry for you automatically. So it's imagine you're CCing this personal assistant and you give it a date and some you know kind of expression of that date. And um, like for, this is an, an, an example of um, a very rudimentary and um, what we call a personal assistant skill, which cancels a follow-up reminder if somebody replies. Um, so that would be an example of something that's that's a little more than a follow-up. This is another something that's a little more than a follow-up. It sends a text message at the same time a follow-up is due. So this the, is the one I use all the, for anyone that's listening. It's just all the stuff you don't remember. And it's like an external brain as a reminder. Like um, I do with this for everything, but like if if I want to get get I have my wife asked me to get something, and by the time five o'clock rolls around, I'm gonna forget. Or if I want to remember to make a payment when I get home at 7 p.m. or buy tickets for a flight, I remind myself versus pieces of paper I used to use. So I use it, I put in 7 p.m. slash SMS at followupthen.com and 7 p.m. And I, a lot of times I'll put the link to the website that I'm gonna buy the flight. So I use this all, I'm I'm probably one, I don't know if you look at all my follow-up then, I have a lot, but um I use this, the SMS more than anything else now, even more than the email, I think. Wow, that's good to know. That's good. In fact, um, you know, I always, I never pass up a moment to ask for feedback. Um, 
As far as scheduling via email, are you still happy to schedule the SMS via email or would you prefer another way of doing that? So um, you can see my screen. Let me show you what I have, my little shortcut to shortcuts. Okay. So I have two shortcuts. I have a, can you see my phone here? I have a compose button right here okay. on, my, on my thing. So I, I just use the compose and that's how I do follow up then. But if I could give you a, a, a thought that might work for you, there's this other cool app that I use. Um, it's called Brain Toss. I've heard of this. So I have other customers that use Brain Toss. My, my consideration isn't so much for you to imitate it, but they have three options. And I use the same follow-up things over and over and over. It's like one day, one week, one month. Mm -hmm. I could pick that. I could pick SMS, regular email. And then the cool thing is, is when I click this, it records and transcribes a little email, some virtual software, and then it automatically sends it. Mm -hmm. So if I could choose like one week SMS or 3 p.m. SMS, I'm always using the same things. Yeah, I can, I can yeah. choose a few selections, SMS, click it, it'll record it and put it in the, in the subject line automatically. That would even make it quicker for me to do it. But I don't mind doing it the other way. This is just something that, that's kind of cool that's new. You know, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. So the, one of the new things that we have in the system, it's really not... Uh, you can't see it, but under the hood, we have this really powerful system to build these new, uh, we call them clients. So uh, an iPhone app or an Android app or a browser extension or an Outlook extension. So these are all different kind of gateways into this follow-up then universe. And of course, we keep all the reminders organized and you can search and sort them and so forth. But we're just now exploring these first array of clients that we're going to create. And yeah. Mobile app is, in fact, our number one top request. And uh, so, so so that's great to know. Yeah. Another thing for those that are listening, like by far, I don't think people can, if, if you think of what you just did with that picture of everything today spread out, there's a certain thought in productivity is you want something to arrive when you want to take action on that activity. Because otherwise it creates stress in your mind. It creates like confusion, overwhelm. So if you have an email box that has like, well, I'm going to, I got to talk to that person in two weeks to, you know, that just causes stress. You can try all the folder systems you want. I, I have my, my, my manager, she's like this intricate folder system with reminder. And I'm like, you know, just send it back to yourself. It'll show up in two weeks. And, and, and when it shows up, that's when you're going to take action. So you can forget yeah. about it totally. So the best thing about follow-up then is like, I don't have stress and my email is empty every single day. Like there's no stress and I, I just trust it. Like the, it's going to show up when it needs to, and I can take care of it. And I have certain things like goals that show up to me every January 1st. And I look at my goals from last year. And, my, and I, a lot of times I, I'll bootleg it. I'll do a goal, but it's like a Google doc. So it's a link to a Google Doc, and I can just pull up and I can modify it that way instead of putting it in the actual email. So I'll use um, URLs many times instead of just that. So things I want to oh, uh, update your your link tree or update your other things. So once a year, I'm updating these things. Now the one thing my EMR is lacking, my medical record, and and I, so what I do, you're gonna laugh. I don't use follow up then only because I have to do um, I have to do. Um, medical record numbers. Okay. So I can do the medical record number and that's kind of HIPAA, HIPAA secured. Mm -hmm. So I used, you're going to laugh. I use Todoist okay. with a reminder to see how the patient is doing in two weeks. And it sends it back to me in Todoist with the EMR number. I put that in my EMR, hit enter, and then send a message to my, my assistant to check on that patient. It's the most ludicrous method, archaic, but there's nothing better. My, my medical record doesn't allow me because, but they only do it for appointments. I can make an appointment in two weeks and they'll do all the appointments I want. But if I just want to be nice, like I'm nice, I'm like, I wonder, they're not, they don't need to see me, but I want to see how that nail is doing in two weeks. Can I have a way of remembering? And there's no way to just to remind, just to wow. be nice and say, Hey doctor, just a little reminder, call this patient in two weeks, but that does not exist. It, it, wow. And I've asked them to do it. So this is where this would fit in. I think. That's really good to hear. You know, follow up. It's this, uh, common thread to so many successful business processes and, and relationship processes. It's, it's if really, you can break it down to that. Yeah, it's relationship. Yeah. You know, a relationship has uh, a rhythm. It's a tempo. You know, you're in touch with, you know, it's funny if you think about the essence of a relationship, like you run into somebody one time and you have a one-off conversation. That's not quite, or maybe that moment, it's a tiny relationship, but then it's nothing. But then you talk to them again and something is there. And then you talk to them again 
And if you just simply communicate over time, a few times, suddenly you have this, this thing, it, it manifests itself called a, re a relationship. And that tempo factor is a huge part of it and a huge part to build that, um, you know, that, that, that feeling that you actually know somebody. Well, and, and that's how autoresponders work, right? With, with email, like email autoresponders. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out, but mm -hmm. you, you send one email in one week, one email, two weeks after, you mm -hmm. know, for example, for heel pain, they come in and I come in, these are, let's talk about my marketing is they download my free book and then they get weekly emails on different topics. So it builds a relationship with me artificially as an mm -hmm. autoresponder. Mm -hmm. That's such a good point. Yeah, so, timing. So, you know, the thing you mentioned earlier too about that feeling of, of mindfulness or, you know, when you don't have to think about something, that is the key insight that really brought me into follow-up then and made me decide to, I had another business at the time that this was expanding and it made me decide to sell the business and focus on this. And it, of course, reminding people is a nice thing to do. I, re I really enjoy helping people remember those tasks, but the the thing I, I actually really enjoy more are these uh, six, these successes and testimonials that I get of people saying how free they feel and how they can enjoy the moment and how they can they can have a more fulfilling time with their family, for example, because they're not looking at their to-do list. They're not organizing some backlogged you know, group of information that they need to, to better plan out. They just send it to the future. And then the byproduct of that is you get to forget about it and you get to just enjoy the present. Yeah. And I think it builds your confidence. Hmm. It, bu it builds your confidence. Like you're so confident in like you have a, you have like this because life is made out of systems. Mm -hmm. So I have a stellar system that no one else has that everyone asks me about. Well, how, how'd you remember? Like, and, and they are feeling bad and I'm feeling confident. They're feeling bad because they forgot and they have too many emails and I'm feeling confident because I remember, not that I remember, but you, you helped me remember and then I, I just bug these people and they're like, well, and I'm, I'm insistent because if I don't get back to me, I remind, I remind them again, remind them again, and I help them. And then I, then I get to share this cool, how'd you do that? Well, I can, this is, this is a great, this is called follow-up then you might want to consider it. And I, I even feel proud because I can brag about it because it's, <laughs> it makes my life so much easier. So uh, it's mu music to my ears, Don. That so what, what other things are on the horizon or things you want, I know you have this memorization add-on, you have a lot of other types. What's, what's most exciting to you right now? So we're at this phase, I, I, I guess I'll tell you where, where we are company-wise. So I, I've done a lot of work myself on this. I'm the engineer, designer. I, there's, there's a small team that, with us as well, but um, I raised a small amount of money at one point and it allowed us to kind of build to where we are and we are able to keep the company. Um, I, I could have raised a significant amount of money more, and decided not to because I want to build in this sustainable way. And the way we do that is by building things that people actually want to pay for. They're actually valuable enough that they would like to pay um, for them because they, uh, hopefully it increases their revenue more than the amount. So the integration with the external systems, for example, integrating with your calendar or with your um, your EMR system even. I mean, we are we are pursuing this deeper integration with these tools is really the future of, of where okay. we're going. There's a lot of personal um, productivity aspects like the text message, we're integrating a mobile app, we're doing browser extensions. So these things are gonna be really fun and kind of bring follow-up then more into your day-to-day -day workflow. Um, but the thing I'm, I'm really happy about is kind of changing the way people interact with their software. They don't have to, I, I really hope that we can create these moments that allow people to get things done without having to context switch and move, you know, from their email to another program to another program. And, you know, instead of doing that, they have everything they need on their, on their mobile device or on their computer within that email to accomplish a task. So a number of like links to EMR links to the patient, the information that you need, everything's accessible right there. Yes, exactly. Like a portal. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, I could show, I'm, there's a quick, um, uh, I, sorry for the background noise there. There's a quick um, screencast. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, I could show you really quick an example sure. of what that might look like. Yeah. Let me just share my screen again here. So th this is um, an example of a Salesforce integration. And we this is a, a beta um, integration we have right now. And it's not, it doesn't apply to everybody, but it's a really good starting point to, to 
to demonstrate this. But in this example, we're sending a follow-up and we're adding it in Salesforce and the dash Ooh, SS. I like that, Salesforce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, that's cool. Yes, and then we and we do all this stuff for you. Like here we are, your personal assistant, hard at work. You're playing golf, of course, and uh, or what you like to do. Does an actual um, person do that or automated? It's all automated. And so that's that's helpful. But the, the most helpful part is, uh, and I'll pause this here for a second. So three months later, you received the follow-up, but instead of getting just the follow-up, as I mentioned, we actually went to your Salesforce account and pulled everything you might need for that follow-up into the follow-up email. So this saves oh. you the hassle of switching between different systems. So we have exactly. shortcuts. You'll see those in a second. We have the latest activity for that contact. So you can see right where you're at. You have all the context you need to follow up. And then of course we have uh, procrastination options if, if needed. Um, so uh, we go through the process of clicking. The, the clicking for a phone call is a, is a native feature in your mobile phone. And then this part is unique to our system. This is actually a completely email-based action. This works on every email client. You don't need to install anything, but that action of completing the activity is actually done via email itself. So you never have to actually leave your email. And so that's our goal is like, let's give you a productive moment. You can actually do your data entry and schedule the next follow-up and add a note or log a call or do whatever you need to do from your email. And um, that's, that's exciting. That's where we're going. I, I really like that. You could do the same thing for an EMR. And, and what's happening now for EMRs, Riley, is, um, and, and so we use Athena. So if you, the first one, if you want to do it, you can do it for Athena. Okay. Um, they, they have this. So I have a couple of these things. Let me tell you about one of them. One's called Patient Education Genius. Hmm. And uh, if I log into my EMR, and uh, they're they're called uh, third party vendors. So let me just show you kind of an idea how that would look. I'm going to pull up a kind of a mock patient okay. for you, so we don't break any HIPAA rules. And uh, just kind of how it how the current system system works and what 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 might be a a, a good thing. So let me pull up um, Amy Test is her name. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. So this is my patient. This is Amy Test. Okay, this is my medical record with Athena. Okay. Um, you can see here, here are the different visits that, that she's had, things like that. Um, here is her date of birth. Here's her medical record number. Here's the provider she'd seen. Here's the medication she's used. Now, what currently happens if I want to make a like a follow up appointment? Okay, um, I can go into here. This is Amy Test, and I can go all the way down, and I can make uh, I can either schedule an appointment, mm -hmm. or I can do this is called an appointment tickler. So mm -hmm. a tickler is like a reminder for my staff to make it. But there's nothing whatsoever. There's appointment types, but there's nothing like a phone call to uh -huh. call them at like two months. Okay, okay. nothing that nothing that works with this tickler. Um, mm. What what works, I think is kind of cool within the chart is this thing where there's third-party vendors. So it's up here, these little three little dots, and these are integrations they have into the medical record. So the mm. most common one called third-party integrations. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and this is one that I currently use all the time. It's called uh, Patient Education Genius. And so the, the cool thing is for this, what it does is I can pick patient education information, but I'm thinking what you could do is something similar is follow up with the patient, what you want to do, and you pick a few things that you mm -hmm. want to do. And the cool thing is, is it pulls in the information from the chart. It's, not, it's probably pretty simple to do. I don't know how you guys do that stuff, but I can either do text, but you could give different options and I can send this to the patient, but I could have a reminder system. So I can send this out to this Amy test thing. But the other cool thing is once I send this out to Amy test, it automatically documents it in the medical record as well. All right. And so I don't right. know how, how yours would integrate with something like that, but I just thought like if I could have my druthers, they would add it to natively, but they won't do that for me. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, a cool idea. No, yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that, that's a perfect example of the type of thing that's in our future. 
Yeah. And we would love for that email when you get the email to follow up with that patient that, you know, you have the phone number there. Yeah. So the patient phone number would be right there and you could maybe hide the, and it could be via email and it would somehow show up in our medical record. Hey, you should, doctor, you should call this, call this patient. You could do it via email. I think right now with email, it's not HIPAA secure. So that's the challenge is how do you send patient information? But I, I think that the future is there and in customer service, having a good customer service, I think is key a relationship and help reduces litigation, reduces a lot of other issues. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, email is, of course, is our history and it's where we've come from, but the new system supports any number of platforms. So we're, we're exploring these different ways of uh, just giving people what they want at exactly the moment they need it. Well, and the other thing about these is these are, are, how do I say it? For us, I don't like it because it's just another thing that they automatically siphon money out of me every single month. But for you, it's a really good thing. So what this is, this is continuity. So we pay $100 per doctor per month for that service. Mm -hmm. And which is, I don't know how, how, what you're looking at, but, you know, something like that would, would easily, you know, you could just add is the, the automatically siphons you get paid. They probably take a 20% cut or something like that, but then they can offer it to their ecosystem. And so that's kind of a neat idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. You know, it's always interesting to hear how different professions use follow-up. And I always learn something in these conversations. In fact, I, I have to tell you, I, I am considering a series of podcasts myself so that number one, I have an excuse to ask people about all their productivity systems, but then secondly, so that I can capture and document these workflows, like the, the things you mentioned, for example, are just, um, these are great examples and things that I might not consider. Um, so, so follow up, you know, I would be curious on that note, following up with the patient when you're not obligated to, I, I mean, I would imagine that's pretty rare. I don't think I've ever had a medical provider do that with me. I, you know, I see them and then I schedule a follow, I schedule an next appointment at the front desk, but having them actually proactively check in, I imagine that sets you apart. It, it, it does. And so what do we do now? Let's say you get an ankle sprain. Okay. And uh, let's say you're doing okay. I think you're going to do okay. And so what we usually do is we make a two week follow-up, but what, the, what do they do? They're feeling fine. So what do they do? They cancel it. And then you have a gap in your schedule. Uh, okay. They might cancel it the day of a couple of days before, you know, cause they're, you think you're going to do okay. And, and, or, and right now deductibles really high co-pays looking at 50 bucks for a specialist. And so, and yes, I want them to come in, but also they have to feel like they're, they're getting their money's worth. And so what does it take me to do even, it might not even be a call. I could even have it set up so I can send them a message through my EMR. Hey, just, how are you doing? Just making sure you're okay like sending that to my staff so they can text them. But I think that's the future because patients are going to want to come in less and less. And if I can reduce something that would take three visits and I'm the guy that can do it in two visits and they didn't really need to come in if they're doing okay, like people get upset. They come in and like, they're okay. They don't need to see you. Yeah, you get your money. But, and also let me explain something else. It's not just that. There's different levels of billing. There's like a level two and a level three. Mm -hmm. And there's, the whole kit and caboodle. So a new patient is usually worth two or three times more a follow-up patient. So I'm clogging my system with all these ingrown toenail follow-ups and they're taking me the same amount of 20 minute slot that I could produce like five or 10 times more with a new patient. So I'm also clogging my system. I'm, I'm, I'm too occupied. And so by freeing it up with just a little automated message to them, hey, just checking how you're doing, hmm. you know, having my staff do that. It, it's good customer service. They save a visit. I'll get them in if they need to be in, but I can fill my stuff with, with thing that produces more, the largest, we call it the largest check. So. Right. That makes a lot of sense. You know, at some point, I don't know if this would be interesting to your audience. I would love to ask you more details about your EMR system and how yeah. an integration might look, you know, how we could do that most effectively. Yeah, we could talk about it. And, and while you got me here, you, you like any other questions about how I use it or thoughts about using it or anything like that? Yeah, you know, I, I guess one one question I have, and this is a genuine point of curiosity, is how would you categorize your business versus personal use of the product? Like how much do you use it as a personal assistant versus like a, an executive assistant? 100%, pretty much 100%. So pretty much all personal. Okay. It's all personal. That's how I use it. Pretty much as I, as I mentioned, um, I, I, wait, actually, but with business. So for example, I'll do an interview with you. 
Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to have a follow-up in a year saying, Hey, Riley, you want to, that's how, how do you, how do you think I remembered to ask you to do another <laughs> interview? It's because I, after I do an interview with someone, I forward that for a year and it'll pop up again and say, Hey, you know, maybe you want to do another interview with Riley again. That's how I remember to do that. Got it. And so I'll, I'll, every, every time I do an interview, it reminds me to do another interview. It's more me remembering to set up the system, but I know the system. I want to, I want to do another one. Why not? And then I liked it. Who's a cool guy. I got something out of it. He got something out of it. And so I do it for all of my interviews. I do it for remembering my first year of marriage. I thought of you all the time because every month it reminded me to buy flowers for my wife for the first year until we read the four languages of love. And I realized she doesn't like gifts. She likes um, me to do stuff like clean the, clean the floor in the, in the kitchen. That's what really makes her excited. So it's not buying stuff, but so I, but I use this once a month to buy my flowers for my wife. I remember remind her birthday every year. I remind New Year's things I have to do every year. I do my goals. They show up for me. Um, But for a lot of the professional contacts, like people invite me to do a talk. I have to do a lot of lectures. So three or four days before my lecture, it actually pops up with my slides in there. And it reminds me to prep a week before versus just the day of the lecture. It reminds me a week before. So I I have that prep time buffered in versus putting it in my, my, I don't use my calendar as much. Mm -hmm. I kind of use my email system a little bit more. And then uh, texting, I use the texting all, all the time. It's like I, I change my filter every three months for my furnace and it sends me a text. I need to do that. Um, I have to flush my pool thing filter every mm-hmm. so often. It reminds me to do that. Okay. I have to, you know, all these dumb little things I do once a year. It just reminds me to do them via text message. And and I do most of my stuff by text message because I, I don't I, I'm not an email guy. I, I'm very structured with email. I look at email from 12 to 1 p.m. That's it. So I'm not the guy that has, I don't have any notifications on my phone. So I look at it when it, in a one hour period. So it follow up then. And let me tell you another tip. You're going to laugh. You might not like this. I put follow up in a special filtered folder called follow up then. Cause I got overwhelmed with all my follow ups. So for those that are doing follow ups, if I did so many, I got overwhelmed. So I have a follow up folder for my follow ups. So it doesn't go into my main email. It goes into a follow up then folder. <laughs> okay. And then you check that on a, periodic yeah. basis every, every okay. when i want to versus like it was inundating me because i had so many especially my sms's because it also sends you an email when you get an sms yeah yeah we do we we right now we do have email as this kind of single source of truth so you can control any follow-up from email and that was the mindset with that but i, I got this from yeah. uh, um, tim ferris having the optional folder so now i have two folders i have an optional folder for everything that's optional and i have a okay. follow-up then folder i only have two folders that has everything yeah. Okay. So that, Interesting. So all the stuff- I think I missed that one. I'm a Tim Ferriss fan. I read uh, yeah. many, several books, but he said what? everything that says unsubscribe, you unsubscribe. Everything uh-huh. that you really don't need to look at it, you automatically filter to an optional folder. So everything of mine goes into the optional folder, unless what I really need to take advantage of. So everything out of auto, I, I I set up a filter. First time it comes through, I filter everything to an optional folder, and and that's how I do everything that comes in. So. Only the stuff that's really important shows up in my real inbox. I check my optional folder once a week okay. and follow up. Then I check it up when it, when it, when there's something that dings me, when it shows up in the little thing, when I look at my email. So anyway, so that's my little system I have. That's great. So actually that, that is something I've considered. So is it, is everything optional by default? And then you take things out. It's the other way, right? It goes, yeah. you filter. Everything goes into my out. inbox and I get pissed and annoyed and I, okay, that's optional. That's optional. That's okay. optional. <laughs> and there's not that many these days, but um, for most things, it's optional. Okay. That's, yeah, that's good to know. And then of course you can bulk select and put a whole bunch of optional at the same time. Yeah. But then you have to, for Gmail, you have to set up your filter. So I don't I know see. if I can set up my, I have to set those up. I have to, I, but I have a little quick way of doing it. Got it. Got it. Anyway. Oh, this is great. This is great. And then if, um, as far as our integration more into the, the medical record system and HIPAA and the HIPAA universe, I'm assuming would it be useful if we were to be more involved in medical? Would it be beneficial? Or do you prefer, you know, having this uh, live within your, your EMR system? I don't know. I, I, I think, I think it would be nice to have it in the EMR. Um, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. So I would say for you, you should only do it if it's a larger, largest check. Either they pay you a really big check to do it or you can get money out of us every month on a recurrent basis. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. That That's the only, because why? Because I might be, I'm a caring Minnesota Midwest guy that really likes my patients and cares. I don't know how many of those you're going to find. 
-hmm. right? I'm not earning any money by that phone call. I'm earning goodwill, but there's no money in that. There's so many systems now and they, they won't even let you talk to the doctor unless you make an appointment because it's all about the money. And I just like customer service. I'm a big believer in being nice and, in the, you know, things like that. So I don't know if other doctors would use it. They'd be like, ah, you know, make a, have them make an appointment. So I don't know how many are going to use it. So okay. I, don't do it for me, but you, 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 you would do it if a, if an EMR would, would, would pay you enough to do it. Good, good, uh, good input. And Don, I have to tell you that there was a fork in the road about, I guess it was about two years ago where I was either going to build a developer tool to help people create these kind of email-based applications or I was going to stay as a productivity tool. And mm -hmm. we chose to stay as a productivity tool. And one of the biggest reasons is I genuinely enjoy working with people like you. Like yeah. that the type of person that has decided to use the system to go the next, the extra mile, to follow up with somebody, to that, that extra check-in tends to be a very productive person and just genuinely is a really fun person to work with. Yeah. And so um you know, the insights that have taken follow-up then to this point are only partially mine, that our users have come out in force to suggest and steer and to kind of help us guide the direction of the product. So so thank you. Um, and of course, thank you for having me on your show. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Riley. And I'll put a little link, uh, go just to go to followupthen.com if they want to learn about you, learn more. And uh, until next time. Great. Thanks, okay. Don. Thanks, buddy.